What's going on guys? Welcome back to another North of Nowhere video. In today's video, I wanted to finally break down our budget for the tower build. I know that this is one of the most uh, frequently asked questions and today I wanted to go line by line and kind of show you what we are estimating this to cost. If you're new to the channel, me and my wife are building a tower cabin Airbnb up in Northern Michigan. But one thing we really haven't talked about is we have not gone through like a a detailed cost breakdown of the build yet. And then at the end of the video, I'll share with you guys which line item to me is kind of the one I'm most worried about in terms of in terms of costs. Okay, so just to kind of preface this, our our contract with our builder is a cost plus contract. Now there's many different contracts you can arrange with a builder. I plan to make a separate video in the future about this and the pros and cons of each, but our contract is a cost plus, which basically means that our builder shows us every single invoice for the project. And then he takes a percentage on top of that. In our case, our builder is charging a 15% management fee. And that's pretty standard. I've seen some builders that will charge lower. Um, many will charge higher. I've seen 10% uh, fees, but oftentimes I find those builders bake in a little cost into the actual materials and stuff, and they're not transparent with the actual invoice pricing. So as some of you may know, I'm a CPA, so I really like trying to analyze and be as detailed as possible when it comes to keeping track of the costs. I did create this construction budget tracker. I'll go through this a little more at the end of the video. I won't dive too deep into it, but I will have a link in the description. If you want this, it'll be for free. Um, all you have to do is sign up with your email and you can download it. So I've been using this to keep track of all of our expenses, comparing them to the estimate. And then also I have a, a timeline tracker in here too. So I'll cover that at the end. The first thing you have to do obviously is clear the site and prepare where you're going to build. For us, the total excavation that we estimated was around 8,000. I know that this is gonna be a little higher just because we've been talking to our builder and we've changed a few things. So I do think that that price will be a little over budget at the end, but we're budgeting around 8,000 for excavation. That includes all of the dirt work, uh, digging the foundation, grading, stumps. We had a lot of stumps that we had to stump out. So that includes all of that. We made a separate video on excavation. We are budgeting around $9,500 for the septic system. Our septic system is going to be kind of interesting because we are building on a hill. So one thing we're exploring is possibly using a plastic tank instead of a concrete tank. The benefit of a plastic tank is they're much more, they're much lighter. So you don't have to, in our case, we're building on a hill. So we would have to hire a special driver and, and a more robust truck to get it over to the drain field area. So there's pros and cons. They're, they're, they're actually pretty similar in price, the plastic being a little cheaper. For the concrete foundation, we are estimating $7,500. So this is something that I also think will go over budget. In fact, I know it will because in our original budget, we were budgeting for a four foot crawl poured wall. Instead, we have opted to do a full basement. It'll be a nine foot wall now. And the reason for that is we wanna, we wanna obviously with the, the slope of the, of the land we have, we want to make it as natural as possible and just doing a full basement kind of made sense. In addition to that, you'll hear a lot of people say that your basement is the cheapest square footage you can buy, especially if you plan to finish it yourself, which we do plan to do. And with our floor plan, it will add another 500 square feet per floor. So that one I do think will be over budget, but that will be a poured wall. So it'll be really nice. For well, we're budgeting $10,000. This can vary greatly depending on your area just because most well drillers charge by the foot. And so you really don't know until they hit that water table where you're gonna end up. The next item is really the framing and the materials. For framing, we are budgeting 35,000 for just the labor to frame it. This will not be an easy frame at all. The tower is over 40 feet tall. It's four levels if you include the basement and it's on a hill. So we definitely will need a sky track to, to build this. And it's just, it's really not your traditional kind of stick frame job where it's just, you know, a three, two ranch on a flat, flat ground. The materials to frame, we are budgeting around 51,000. So that is all of the lumber, all of the engineered lumber. We're doing two by six exterior construction. Um, since we're building in Northern Michigan, you almost have to do two by six for the insulation requirements. And that includes the roof trusses and, and all the roofing too. So next big line item you really have is um, the windows. So for us, we're budgeting 
$30,000 for windows. We haven't really decided which window we are going to do yet. We're kind of picking between Pella and Anderson. So we're getting both of, both of them quoted out. But for the most part, we have standard window sizes. That's one thing with us building in that rectangular shape, we're able to use a lot of standard sizes. If you guys saw our, our one of our previous videos about the A-frame build that we wanted to do and eventually decided not to, that was going to be a significant part of that budget. A lot of modern A-frames have that, you know, that really beautiful picturesque window wall. But a lot of that is custom glass. So that's really a, a line item on an A-frame that can add up quickly. We do have, I think, two custom sizes and they're on that top level. One is a big, almost floor to ceiling, eight foot window. And then there's another one on that same wall that uh, is custom too. So 30,000 for windows, that's another one of your biggest line items in there too. Interior and exterior doors, we're budgeting uh, around 5,000 for the interior doors on the tower. We are doing all pocket doors because of the limited space uh, per floor. For exterior doors, we have two and we're budgeting 8,000. We have one for the main entrance and then one on that uh, third level patio. Um, electrical, we're budgeting around 18,000. This has really been a dilemma that we've pondered. Maybe we'll have to honestly get your guys' thoughts if you, if you have a preference. We love obviously a natural fire, a real wood burning stove, or even a gas uh, fireplace. One thing though is in a rental, since this will be a rental, electric is more energy efficient. You don't have to worry about venting like you do with the gas fireplace. There's just a lot less maintenance too. The trade-off is it doesn't look as realistic. There are a lot of new electric fireplaces coming out now that have a much better look in my opinion, but we're kind of on the fence with that. So HVAC kind of budgeting 18,000 as well for that. We considered doing a, uh, doing a zoned system in, in the tower just with the multi-level approach. But what I think we're going to end up doing, cause that is, that's much more expensive, is have one thermostat on the second level, have the EcoB temperature sensors on the first and third level, and then it'll kind of normalize the temperature from there. Another thing we're doing instead of a traditional AC unit is we are going to do a heat pump which is uh, something I just really started learning about lately. They're much more energy efficient, they're greener, and in fact, you can, if you choose to do a heat pump uh, for your heating and cooling in your home right now, under the Inflation Reduction Act, you can take a tax credit for that. So uh, that is also a, very, a really nice benefit right now of that. We will have a, uh, a furnace as well, but the heat pump kind of supplements your furnace so that both of them are not working too hard and they're, you know, they're kind of working together. So with that, it's much more energy efficient, should bring down the, uh, the utilities that we have in the tower. Plumbing, budgeting again, kind of like around that $18,000 mark. Plumbing for us will not be anything complicated. We do have some, you know, we have that bump out on the second level. So there is the plumbing that kind of goes under the floor there, which will be a little, uh, we'll have to be really conscious about the insulation there. And then also in the kitchen on the third level, that's within that bump out too. Kind of finishing off the exterior uh, for the roof, we're budgeting 12,000. We are doing a flat kind of commercial style roof. It's not really flat. It's actually, a, I think it's a one over 12 pitch. So it, it pitches to a box drain on that north wall, but it's it's relatively flat. And it, the, the material we'll use is, it's called TPO. It's used on a lot of commercial flat top buildings. That's what we're, we're kind of using. So one of the benefits is we really don't have like, you know, for an A-frame, you have that steel roof, which can be really pricey. Uh, we're just doing that flat TPO style commercial roof. One thing that we didn't really budget in, in our initial budget, but we added is that balcony on the third level. We're kind of thinking that that'll come in around 10,000, but that's not something that we included in our initial budget. Oh, the one thing I didn't cover is siding. Siding's a big one. We are budgeting 20,000 for siding. We are still undecided on the exact material. We know that we want it to be a black color. We're just kind of like naturally attracted to wood siding but that comes with a lot of maintenance uh, depending on what you do. They make shoegy bond siding, which is something we're considering, uh, which kind of gets rid of the, the major concerns with wood siding of like wood rot, pest infestation, and, and kind of all those things. Um, we're also looking at like an aluminum siding and then uh, some steel options as well. So that's still something we are uh, thinking through and uh, yeah, 20,000 for siding. So that's most of the exterior and kind of the mechanical line items for the tower. Now I will kind of get into like the interior finish type stuff. So for the cabinets in the kitchen, countertops and vanities, we are budgeting around 15,000. At the end of the build, we'll really go through uh, where we landed on all these items but we are still really vetting out 
a supplier for all of those things. Prices can vary greatly uh, with cabinets depending on where you source them from. Same is true for vanities, whether you do custom vanities or something that's more stock, you know, at Lowe's or Home Depot, and then countertops as well. We have two bathrooms in the tower. We're budgeting around 15,000 for tile. All of the trim work, you know, kind of like the finishing trim work, uh, we're budgeting 8,000 for that. Drywall, we have at 17,000. Flooring is a big one. Uh, we plan to do kind of like an LVP, luxury vinyl plank flooring. The tower is 14, or just under 1,500 square feet, and we're budgeting around 13,000 for all of the flooring. Painting, this is something we'll probably do ourselves, but right now we have it subcontracted in our budget, and right now we are budgeting 15,000 for painting. And I think that's pretty much it. That's everything I have in here. Again, this is really just the preliminary estimated budget for the tower. The other thing on top of this that I had mentioned is our builder's management fee. So he takes 15% on top of all that, which equates to, in my calculation, $52,565. So with all of that together, our budget for the tower comes in at $403,000, which honestly feels so crazy to say to me because when Hunter and I started this process back in 2020 and 2021, our initial budget was $250,000. You know, obviously all, the, all of this depends on your area and lo local home prices and the amount of builders in your area. In Northern Michigan, there's a severe lack of builders, which leads to a lot of competition and people charging a very high price per square foot. If you take 403,000 and divide it by our square footage, which is 1,493 square feet, it comes out to about $275 a square foot, which to be completely honest, still seems very high, but we know of builders charging 350, 400, $500 a square foot in Northern Michigan. And in fact, for our A-frame build that we almost did, that's what we were getting quoted around $400 a square foot. Again, we'll kind of see where we end up with all of this. When you're doing a cost plus contract, things change. You know, you get a bid from a con subcontractor six months before they actually start doing the work and, you know, material prices fluctuate, labor changes. So I do expect us to kind of be higher and lower on certain budget items, but hopefully we end up around that $403,000 mark. We are, however, preparing a 10% allowance within that. So it's really common if you look up anyone that's built a new custom home, you really want to at least have about 10% in cash available in case you go over. And we are kind of prepared to do that, although we're being very conscious and meticulous when it comes to sourcing the, to really try and stay at this $403,000 mark. So yeah, guys, that is kind of our budget breakdown for the tower. I hope that was helpful, helpful for you. So now for the line item that really kind of, I guess, scares us the most in terms of going over budget. Really curious what you guys think it is, but the one thing that I'm the most concerned about is the siding. And the reason I say that is we have 20,000 budgeted for siding. While we save in a lot of other areas on the tower, such as the windows, like I had mentioned, one of the things about our rectangle construction is we do have a lot of siding. One type of siding that we really love the look of is Shishugiban. I won't explain that too much, but basically it's a, a charred cedar that uh, really is supposed to hold its color and, and extends the longevity of the wood for up to 50 years, if not longer. And it just looks really cool and good. I, I'll, I'll put a couple examples on the screen, but there's just something about to us that natural wood look um, that is just so stunning. It can go anywhere from like 10 on the very, very low end to around $25 a square foot. I mean, you can get vinyl siding for two to three dollars a square foot even like your cement board stuff is four to eight dollars a square foot so it's much more expensive but it looks incredible we are also looking at like steel and aluminum type siding and that can range anywhere from like six to ten dollars a square foot so to be completely honest i wouldn't be shocked if we end up spending double that on siding so hopefully we can find um areas within each of these line items to help offset that i wanted to show you this spreadsheet that i created quickly because i have found that this is really helpful helping me stay organized for, for the entire thing. I'll have a link to this in, in the description. This view right here is the, what I'm just calling the, the budget tracker. On the left-hand side here, I have like kind of all of the subcontractors in the major line items associated with each. And then I have a column for the estimate and the actual cost. 
So for example, I have all of the um, actual cost being what the estimate is right now, but say for excavation, say for excavation, we come in at 10,000. If you input that in here, it sh automatically shows the variance and the percentage increase or decrease that you have for that line item. And then it conditionally formats it to, to, to be red if it's over budget, green if it's um, under budget. So, you know, if I say uh, the well came in at $5,000, you know, you can see that obviously that column turns green. I've been finding this just to be really helpful to see where we're over a lot and where we're, you know, kind of under in certain items. This section here is really like all of the, you know, build only costs that I just went through in the video. And then below here, I have a section for all of the various non build related expenses. So things like furniture, things like um, we're going to do a hot tub, the landscaping appliances. That is all something you can add down here. And then I have kind of a third section here, which is all of the pre construction expenses. So things Things like you know the the what we paid for the land the driveway the clearing even though we did a lot of that ourselves you know I still have the costs in here um, the price we've paid for the the renderings for the tower and then the architecture fees and stuff like that so the reason I wanted to do this is I find that a lot of people on YouTube talk about the price to build but then they never really talk about um, all of the additional expenses. So things like furniture and appliances and, and architecture fees and stuff like that. When people talk about price per square foot, they're usually talking about structure only. And so what I have in here is when you input all of these expenses, all of your, your structure, your build expenses, your non-build related expenses, and then the pre-construction expenses. I have a section down here where you can input the square footage of your home and then you'll start to see the price per square foot for each of the three items. Build only, build plus furnishings, and then everything involved. If you guys are interested in this, again, I'll have a link in the description and you can download it. The other thing I have in here too that I've been finding really useful is this Gantt chart. And now I'm really wishing that I would have just went through and put like fake contractor names because now I'm realizing that this will look kind of funny blurred but basically this is you know like your like your typical project management Gantt chart where you can start to kind of just lay out how long certain trades are going to take and when to schedule the next trade I also have down here a draw schedule so if you are financing the build I, I like to keep track of the draws that our builder has re requested the amount and what it's for uh, the work that was performed yeah guys this is the uh, kind of the budget tracker if you want it i'll have it in the description and i hope that this was helpful i i really uh like we've said in all our videos want to be as open and transparent about cost as much as we can because our eyes were truly opened from the start of this process three years two to three years ago to where we are now finally building so much has changed We've realized that things you read online are not all that realistic. Granted, we are doing a custom build. So custom architecture and homes versus a spec home or a kit home. Those are two totally different things. But our thinking is that in the long run, with the tower being a truly one of a kind custom build, that it'll pay for the additional cost in the in you know the rates that we're able to charge and, and hopefully the occupancy that we have and as always let us know if you have any questions in the comments below thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next one somewhere north of nowhere